in this video we are going to discuss about input output processor in computer organization architecture uh, in short we can call it as iop so iop stands for input output processor uh, so in addition to the processor that is cpu uh, we can maintain one or more io processors in the computer uh, so what is the use of uh, input output processor Uh, till now in order to transfer the data between io devices and memory we use cpu uh, but we know that uh, cpu is extremely faster and mainly cpu is useful for computation purpose uh, so computations means for executing the instructions mainly cpu will be used but till now in order to transfer the data between io devices and memory we use the cpu only so in order to reduce the burden on the cpu here io processor was developed the main task of io processor is uh, it performs io transfers between memory and io devices so io processor is mainly useful in order to perform input and output operations between memory and io devices let us take this diagram so this is nothing but block diagram of a computer with input output processor uh, so here we have memory unit and uh, this is nothing but a bus so with the help of this bus we have connected cpu as well as input output processor uh, cpu is mainly useful for computation purposes for executing the instructions uh, whereas if it is uh, any io operation then cpu allocate the task to io processor so io processor is uh, here we have io bus uh, i with the help of this io uh, bus uh, we have attached several peripheral devices to the io processor uh, here the peripheral devices may be either input devices or output devices so with the help of the io processor we can transfer the data between this memory as well as this peripheral devices so that is the major advantage of the io processor here cpu is nothing but master whereas io processor is nothing but slave if there is uh, any io operation then cpu assigns the task to io processor so now it is the duty of the io processor to transfer the data between uh, uh, io devices and the memory now let's see how the communication will be done between cpu and iop uh, so we have uh, cpu operations and io operations so first cpu send instructions to test iop path uh, so first of all cpu will send an instruction in order to check the status of io processor io processor may be either free or busy with some data transfer or io processor may be overburdened so for that purpose it has to know the status first so for that purpose for that purpose it is sending an instructions to the io processor so io processor transfers status word to the memory location suppose if io processor is busy then uh, it places busy in the corresponding memory word and transfers that word to the i cpu suppose if io processor is uh, overloaded overburdened okay then uh, it puts uh, that overburdened status in the corresponding uh, memory and uh, transfers it into the cpu let us assume that now io processor is free so now the status is free so that uh, free word will be transferred to the cpu now cpu let's see the statement here if status is okay that means if io processor is free then it sends io instructions to the io processor so if io processor status is free then cpu will assigns a task to the io processor in order to perform the io operation so for that purpose it is sending an io instruction to the io processor so now what the io processor will do is it access the memory for the corresponding iop program why because we know that the task of io processor is 
it has to transfer the data between IO devices and the memory. So memory is needed here. So it access the memory for the corresponding uh, IO program. So it may be either read operation or write operation. Suppose if it is read operation, then that uh, peripheral devices, that input device information will be transferred to the memory. Let us assume that if it is a write operation, then uh, the content of the memory will be placed on the output device. So depends upon the operation, it will tries to perform the type of operation. Uh, next, uh, it conducts IO transfers using VMA, prepare the status. Uh, so here, uh, uh, here the IO processor is uh, uh, performing the corresponding transfers using direct memory access. So once the transfer is over, then it sends the corresponding status to the corresponding status to the uh, CPU. So here in the meantime, CPU continues with execution of the other program. So why the IO processor is doing the IO IO program while the IO processor is executing that IO instruction program while the IO processor is transferring the data between IO devices and the memory using DMA then the CPU may continue with execution of the other program okay so once the corresponding uh, IO program execution is over then IO transfer completed then it interrupts CPU so once that uh, IO program execution is over, then it sends an interrupt signal to the CPU. So the IO processor execution is over, the IO program execution is over. So that uh, interrupt signal will be sent to the CPU. So once the CPU receives the interrupt signal, then it has to check whether that uh, IO program execution was successfully completed or not. So for that purpose, it requests for IO processor status. So what is the status of that IO program? Whether it is successfully completed or uh, some other program is remaining. So for that purpose, it will uh, send a request. Okay. Then, then uh, if the transfer, it transfers the status word to the memory location. So here the point is, it transfers the status word to the memory location. Let us assume that uh, the IO processor, uh, that program execution, the IO transfer is successfully completed then it sends that status to the CPU so now CPU came to know that uh, IBO processor has successfully completed the operations so it continues with uh, execution of the other program so that is the point here so it sends the status uh, it transfers the status mode to the memory location so it checks the status mode so once IBO processor sends that uh, status mode it checks the status mode so let us assume that the IBO program was successfully completed. So it continues with execution of the remaining program. Okay. So this is the responsibility of the IBO processor. So we are uh, using IBO processor in order to reduce the overburden of the CPU. So now it is the duty of IBO processor to transfer the data between IBO devices and the memory. So this is about IBO processor in computer organization architecture. Uh, in the next video, we will see about uh, serial communication.